Shalom, yes, Allah. Salaki, his brother Mapathak, right? That'd be key, but in the ancient Paleo Hebrew, right? And this is going to be a quick video showing how our Lord and Savior uh, was Yahweh Salakia, was Isaac in the regeneration. You understand? Yahweh Shai is Isaac in the regeneration, right? And before we go into it, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to the Most High God, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, right? Which would be Yahweh in the name of his only begotten son, who the real ignorantly called Jesus, but we know him as Yahweh Shai, right? And um, yeah, man, it's going to be a quick one, right? And um, we're going to start it off with Genesis 18 from the top. And it reads, And the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre, and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. And it's dealing with an account where Yahweh Shai um, showed himself unto Abraham. You understand? It says, And he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door. So this is going into Abraham seeing Yahweh Shai and two angels. Right? And it says, And bow himself toward the ground. And that's why he bowed himself toward the ground, because it was the Lord. It wasn't just uh um damn uh regular angels. It was literally Yahweh Shah that he was seeing. Cause our forefathers don't bow down to um just regular angels, man. Alright, so this is the book of Revelation chapter 19 and verse 10. Real quick precept to prove a point. It says, And I fell at his feet to worship him. So you had John the Revelator trying to bow down to an angel, right? And it says, And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Yahweh Shai. Worship the Most High God, for the testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. But the point is, John the Revelator tried to bow down to an angel, and he didn't allow him to, man. He said, kind of chill out, right? That's how you know this is dealing with Yahweh Shai, <coughs> Shalakia, in, in Genesis 18, right? And even verse 1, it tells you, and the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre. It's not talking about the Most High God, Yahweh, hopped off his throne to appear unto Abraham. It's talking about Yahweh Shai, right? So let me read verse 3 again. It says, and said, My Lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, right? Um, I pray thee from thy servant, right? And I want to jump to the point. This is uh, verse 9, and it reads, And they said unto him, Where is Sarah thy wife? And he said, Behold, in the tent. And he said, I certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. So this is Jehovah Shai speaking unto Abraham. He said, I'm going to return unto you according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah, thy son shall have a son. Salaki, Sarah, thy wife shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door, which was behind him. Right? So Yahweh Shai told Abraham, I'm going to return, I'm return unto you according to the time of life. Right? And that's talking about the 10 months that it takes for a woman to conceive. Right? Today, they will tell you it's nine months. But in our, when we were in our original estate, it took 10 months for a woman to conceive. Right? And we're going to prove it. Let's go to the um, wisdom of Solomon. Right, we're gonna get straight to the point. Wisdom of Solomon seven and verse two, and it reads, "And my mother's womb was fashioned to be flesh in the time of ten months, being compacted in blood." Right, and it says of the seed of men and the pleasure that came with sleep. So right, that's what Yahweh I was going into when He said, "I'm gonna return to you in the time of life." Right, in ten months. Right, so that's plain. Let's go back. And read that again, right? So this Genesis um, 18 and verse 10 again, right? And it says, and he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life, right? He's talking about that 10 months that it takes for a woman to conceive, right? And lo, Sarah, thy wife shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door, which was behind him, right? So throughout, when you read throughout the accounts, Yahweh Shai never returned it to him until she conceived Isaac. That's because Yahweh Shai is Isaac in the regeneration, right? So let's go to Genesis 21, and we're going to start from the top, <laughs> right? And it says, and the Lord visited Sarah as he said, right? So the Lord, Yahweh Shai kept his word, and he visited Sarah as he said, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken, for Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age, right? So she bare Yahweh Shai, right? Because Yahweh Shai is Isaac in the regeneration, right? And it says, and at that time, at the set time of which the Most High God has spoken to him, right? It's talking about the time of life, at 10 months. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah bare to him, Isaac, right? So she bare Yahweh Shai, right? Yahweh Shai is Isaac in the regeneration, right? We're going to keep re uh, stamping that and reiterating that point, man, right? And we're going we're gonna to prove it, right? Let's go to this next chapter. Right, so this is Genesis 22, and we're going to start from top, right? And it says, And it came to pass after these things that the Most High God did 
tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am, right? And it says, and he said, Take now thy son, thine only son, right? And that's spiritual, right? That's why he said thine only son, because we understand that um, Abraham also had Isaac, right? I mean, Salaki he also had Ishmael, but he called Isaac the, his only son. That's spiritual, right? Let's get the classic real quick in Genesis 3 and 16, right? And it reads, For the Most High God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Right? So that's why he was he was called the only son, man. Right? That, that, that was through the spirit. Right? Let's go back to Genesis 22. And it says, I'm going to read verse 2 again. It says, And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Mor uh, Mor Moriah, and offer him therefore a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. Right? So this is the uh, the Most High God testing Abraham's faith, man, seeing if he would sacrifice his son, right? His only son, right? Through the spirit. And it says, And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac, his son, and claved the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went into the place of which the Most High God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place of fire off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they both went and they went both of them together. Right? So this is getting to the point now. Let's read verse 7. And it says, um, Salaki, it says, And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father, and said, My father. And he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Right? So um, Isaac kind of like, hey, I see the fire, I see the wood, but hey, where the, where the lamb at that we supposed to be sacrificing, Father? Right? Where is that lamb? Right? Where is that sacrificial lamb? Right? And it says, um, Salakia, in verse 8, and it says, And Abraham said, My son. The Most High God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering, right? And he was referring to Isaac, right? Because he, he was supposed to sacrifice Isaac, right? The Most High God was testing his faith. So he referred to Isaac as that sacrificial lamb, right? Because once again, Yahweh Shai is Isaac in the regeneration, right? Yahweh Shai is the, the, um, the lamb without blemish, you understand? Let's get the precepts on it. Real quick, let's go to Second Peter 1. Right in verse 19, and it reads, um, Salaki, I want first Peter 1 and 19. Bear with me. First Peter 1 and 19. Right? So this is the book of First Peter to the 1 in verse 19. And it reads, But with the precious blood of Yahweh Shai, right, Hamashiach, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. So Yahweh Shai is that lamb, right? But in Genesis it called Isaac, uh Isaac was the lamb that Abraham was talking about, right? Because Yahweh Shai is Isaac, once again, right? Let's get another precept. To show that Yahweh Shai is the lamb. Right? This is St. John chapter 1 and verse 29. It reads, The next day John seeth Yahweh Shai coming unto him, and saith, Behold, the lamb of the Most High was taken away the sin of the world. You see that? So Yahweh Shai is that lamb. Right? Let's go back to Genesis 22. Right? So, the, hey, man, the scriptures get kind of deep, man. Right? And um, where was we at? Verse 8, right? I'm going to read it again. It says, And Abraham said, My son, the Most High God, will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. And he was referring to Isaac. Right? And it says, So they went, both of them together, and they came to the place which the Most High God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there. Right? And it says, And laid the wood in order, and bound Isaac his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. Right? And it says, And Abraham stretched forth his hand, and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest the Most High, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son from me. Right? So the Most High God was testing um, Abraham's faith. Right? And this is, this is a key point right here, verse 13. And, um, and Abraham lifted up his eyes. So throughout this whole account, they're talking about a lamb. Where's the lamb? Right? The Most High God is going to provide a lamb. Right? So this is a heavy point. Verse 13, it says, And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram. 
right? So this is spiritual, right? Man's going to the Lord, man, right? So next thing you know, he look up and now the Lord have a ram caught in a thicket by his horns, right? And it says, and Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son, right? So instead of that lamb that they were um, prepared, that they were supposed to sacrifice, right, was which was really... Um, which was really Isaac, you understand, Yahweh Shai in the spirit, right? They end up sacrificing the ram because it wasn't time for that, that, the ultimate sacrifice, which is Yahweh Shai, right? So let me get this real quick in Habakkuk, right? Through the spirit, right? So they were, um, in the spirit, they were talking about Yahweh Shai being sacrificed for, um, for the sins of Israel, right? But it wasn't appointed for that time, right? So this is the book of Habakkuk, chapter 2 and verse 3, and it reads, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. So through the spirit, Yahweh Shai, right? Isaac, right? In the spirit had to be sacrificed uh, one day, man. Right? But the vision is a set, is is appointed. Salaki, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end, it shall speak and not lie. Though, in, though it tarry, wait for it because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Right? So even though they understood like, yeah, the, the Most High God is going to provide that lamb. It wasn't yet uh, time for Yahweh Shai to die for the sins of the nation, man. Right, so Yahweh Shai is Isaac in the spirit, right? And um, let's go get a, uh, one more. Right, so this is the book of um, Matthew chapter one and verse one, and it reads, "The book of the generation of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, the son of David." Right, because we understand that Yahweh Shai is uh, the son of David, right? Because he he's King Solomon in the regeneration. Right. And it says the son of Abraham. Right. And he's also called the son of Abraham because he's literally Isaac in the regeneration. Right. And it says and Abraham begot Isaac. Isaac begot Jacob. Jacob. Be right. And it goes into the uh, genealogy until it gets to Yahweh Shai. Right. But I'm going to read verse one again. It says the book of the generation of Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach, the son of David. Right. Because once again, Yahweh Shai is King Solomon in the regeneration. Right. And it says the son of Abraham because Yahweh Shai is Isaac in the regeneration. Right and Lord willing, this was edifying. Right, Lord willing, brothers got the understand the understanding. Right, and um, Yahweh Shai is Isaac, man. Right, and with that, Shalom, Yashallah.